okay, I'm here. Uh, this is uh, Melvin. He's not a great dog friend. Even though he's barking, we're ignoring it. Because remember, any attention is valid. And this is Bruce. Bruce lives here. Melvin, we want to live here. He's a mate dog, our favorite rescue in L.A. In this video, I'm going to go over some tips on how you can get a dog to stop barking. Now, uh, we went over some of these things already. I'm going to use a clicker for this. And I have some treats that are ready to go. Now, for a dog, standing up is a more authoritative posture. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to teach the quiet command. Now, in order to teach the quiet command, first we have to teach the speak command. Now, I, Bruce is gonna get a bully stick for later on because he's not getting any treats for this. I'm gonna ignore him right now. I'm gonna use a clicker. Now, if you use a clicker, you have to first prime the clicker, which means the prime the clicker is like this. You throw a treat, about 10 treats on the ground. Every time a dog licks up the treat, you click. The click is to indicate you just did what I want and I'm gonna get you a treat in your mouth as soon as I possibly can. So, speak. In this case, I want the speak. Quiet. So I'm gonna wait for a bark. Speak. One second of silence. Quiet. So I'm putting both of these things in context. Dogs learn through association. A lot of times we say be quiet when the dog's barking. So the dog, that means quiet means bark. It's the opposite of what we mean. So and you see now, he's a very smart dog. You can see, so every he, when we go in training mode, his, 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 he changes his, his operation. Uh, so I'm gonna wait for another bark. And you see, watch the tail as it goes down. That's less authoritative. Quiet. I was waiting for a bark, but he's giving me what I want. And so go with what you want. Now, if he gives me an SIT, I will click for that. Now, I can tell him to sit. I will, I'll show you here. Sit. Sit. So the click, when the dog does whatever the behavior is, and then I'm going to get a treat in your mouth as soon as possible afterwards. Quiet. Now, if you just click for no reason when the dog's quiet, it's kind of out of context. That's why I click for on speak, click for off, quiet. All right, so um, when you do this, and you, we've already seen good results, we practiced this earlier. So that's the first thing. Uh, now, uh, for dogs, the higher a person, uh, for a human to stand up is very authoritative. I think he thinks he's a guard dog, and when I stand up, that's why he was barking because I was walking around demonstrating something else right before we did this. So what I wanna do is I wanna teach him that this person standing up is actually a good thing. You can use the same technique with, with the speak, Quiet. Now, one thing you when you're doing this, I did. I was just sloppy with my hand placement here, so this is how you should do it. See how my hands at my side? And I say he's looking at my hand, so I'll wait for a speak this time. <laughs> speak, and then I reset my hand to the side. Otherwise, he's just gonna look at it if I'm holding it right here. He's still looking at it now, but there we go. Quiet. So always kind of reset your hand. You can put it behind your back too, but I just usually like to be casual. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, me standing up is gonna is gonna trigger him. I'm not gonna demonstrate it here because he's gonna it's gonna take a long time to settle down. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you can use some classic or uh, some counter conditioning to help the dog not bark and see me standing up is actually a good thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it backwards. And I get people like that watch my videos. Goes, that's not how you're supposed to do counter conditioning. I'm doing it this way intentionally. So thank you everybody for your uh, that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him a treat. I'm gonna raise up just a little bit. I'm gonna give him a treat. I'm gonna raise up a little bit more. So that time he barked, so that meant I gave him too much criteria. So I'm gonna raise up, whoops. This is why I do it the way that I'm doing. So if you give a dog a treat for barking, like I mentioned, that's teaching them to bark. So, speak. Speak. Quiet. Now that second speak, I was gonna give that to him as a quiet, but when I clicked, he barked at the same time. It got converted to a speak instead of a quiet. All right, so I have this uh, have this deal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, have lower criteria. So I'm gonna give him the treat and then raise up just a little bit. That was even too much. Now he's worked up, this is not the ideal time to work it. We've been spent three hours doing this. He's kind of not in his A game. So this is a time, when you do this exercise, you wanna exercise him first, Give him 10 minutes to relax. Make sure there's no snow blow or snow blow. Or, I live in the Midwest too. Um, or craziness sounds or stuff going outside because that's going to put him on. So this is not ideal, but I have to do this video so you guys can watch it. 
So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them the treat and then move up, to shift just a little bit. I'm gonna split them. And then a treat and move up a little bit. Treat, move up a little bit. And again, this that normally would not be a response, but because again, he's worked up. So what you wanna do is first you proceed the movement with the reward to get him in a good mood. But actually what we wanna do is we want the, the movement to be the trigger. Of the so uh, let me do a couple more. You're not making me look very good on camera, Melvin. A little bit under his breath, we kind of like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of these and then I'm gonna shift it. Whoops, sorry about that, buddy. Okay, so treat, shift. Treat, shift. Treat, shift. Then shift, treat. This is the important transition. Shift, treat. Shift, treat. Shift, treat. You saw I had more criteria. I raised myself up higher. I'm, gonna go, I'm not going to go through it to slow down because, again, this is not the ideal time to do this. I'm doing this as a tutorial video for you guys. But what I'm doing is if he barks, that means you offered too much criteria. And the whole point of this is no barking whatsoever. So you might have to just do a little shift like this for a long, for like two or three practice sessions. Now, practice sessions should be ideally done about every 90 seconds. I'm holding a treat here to stop him from barking so he can hear me. Don't treat him when you're barking unless you're doing the exercise I just talked about. Now, let's say the door triggers him. So we would do the same thing. I would be on an earwick talking to somebody out there. And what I would do is say, okay. And I would at first want the move, want the sound outside to be very tiny. So I'd say, and I would come up with a code. Usually I say, okay, every time you hear me say a number, make the sound. I don't want to say now, 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 because then he says now means the sound's going to happen. So I'm sitting there talking and I say, you know, one time when I was 16, they like did, and then I give this. And then, you know, and I, would, I couldn't wait till I was 21. Sound, treat. So now that after a while, the sound means, is kind of like the click, the sound means I'm about to get a treat. But we keep it very, very low until eventually he doesn't respond at all. You see his ears maybe move, but he doesn't bark. And then we can gradually make that sound a little bit more a little bit more until eventually it's like somebody pounding on the door. Literally, you go boom, and then give him the treat. So he has become classic or a counter conditioned that when that sound happens, instead of barking to say I disagree with that sound, I hear that sound and I interpret that sound as something good is happening. I like it. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is kind of not related to this. Well, it's related to his problem, but it's not related to the sounds. Um, he gets so worked up for the walk that he can't settle himself down and walk, and he's a basket case. He's outside barking at everything. Now, the dog's energy in your house is the energy they're going to carry with them on the walk, the energy in the house as you go through the leashing process. Most of us confuse excited for happy when it comes to dogs because their mouth is open. It looks like a smile to us. But that's actually usually the opposite of smiling. I like those kisses. That can be passive training for that. He likes you. Say kisses. Um, okay, so basically what you want to do is teach them to be calm before you go outside. And so what I do is, let's say that, um, uh, and my legs are going to go to sleep when I'm doing this, but I'm not going to move just for you, buddy. I'm going to put, cut off my circulation just for you. So let's say the leash is over there. And I get up and I start walking to where the leash is. Now usually we say, you want to go for a walk? What's going on? You want to go on walk, you walk, you walk, you walk. And we get that all worked up like that. Don't, don't narrate. I might give you a bully bite uh, so I can talk about the rest of this stuff. Not ideal, but in this situation so that everybody doesn't have to hear the barking the whole time. And yes, you'll get one too because you're doing such a good one. All right, so we'll give, and you kind of were dainty on that last one, so you're going to get a small one. Sit. Sit. You reward, I reward what I like. Sit. There we go. Okay, so basically let's say the leash is 10 feet that direction. So basically don't narrate, don't tell the dog where to go for a walk. And we want to, this is a process called desensitization. So what I'm going to do is, let's say I'm sitting on the couch there. I get up and I start walking where the leash is. As soon as the dog recognizes, he's heading where the leash is. The dog's going to be like, I'm going to beat you to the punch. Whoever's in front is perceived to be the leader in the dog world. So as soon as the dog runs in front of me, or as soon as it walks or runs in front of me, I turn around and I go sit back down. I don't say no. I don't correct. This is operant conditioning. Did you eat that already? Okay, well, that was a tiny one, so I'll give you a bigger one. Um, so basically, um, what I'm saying is, as soon as you walk in front of me, that stops the process of me going to where the leash is. Now, picking up the leash is an example of what we call classical conditioning. You pick up the leash, and then something fun happens immediately after, something the dog likes immediately after. And he's probably chewing this faster because he's all worked up. Stress, chewing, 
dogs. Okay, so basically, uh, I had a guy in South Central Los Angeles. It took us 45 minutes of walking back and forth toward the leash before the dog figured out, as soon as I walk in front, he turns around and sits down on the couch. And when he sits on the couch, we wait and the dog comes and barks. We don't say a word. We wait for the dog to settle itself down. The only I'm, I'm going to start this process again is when you being calm. And you have to figure this out on your own. I'm not saying calm down or anything else. When the dog is calm, that's when I start the process again. But as soon as he walks in front of you, turn around and go sit back down. So the leash is actually over there. So you're going to kind of do that process there. So once you get to where the leash is, you tell the dog to sit. Sitting is a more subordinate position. If the dog sits within three seconds, you're going to reach for the leash. But I want you to think of reaching the leash as something that's going to take you a long time to do. You're going to reach. As soon as the dog gets out of a sit, again, we're going to stop. Pull our arm back down and say sit. If he sits within three seconds, I start process again. If he doesn't sit within three seconds, I walk all the way back to the couch, and the whole process starts over again. So let's say I go there, and I start reaching, and I, you'll probably only get this far before he gets up. And you put your arm down and say sit. He sits. He gets up, sit, so he gets up, sit, he gets up again, sit. Now this time I would go like, and I would just wait for him to sit. I would say sit three or four times, and provided it's in that three second window, if he does sit, then I continue the process. But after about three or four times, he kind of knows what I want. And so if he doesn't sit within three seconds, then I walk back to the couch and sit down, and again, the whole process starts over again. This part took an hour. So 45 minutes of walk there, an hour of reaching. And at first it was this high, then this high, then eventually he could touch it. As soon as he touched it, the dog would freak out, put it back down. Anytime the dog offers you the criteria you don't want, which is excitement, the process stops. No punishment, no yelling, no chastising. And if he goes to a sitting position, it'll continue. If not, you go all the way to the couch. The secret to this is practice this at times when you are not planning on going for a walk. That breaks the association. And that's kind of the reason with classical conditioning. Every time you pick up a leash, it's guaranteed walk. Now it's now we just drill some of the time. So he got, well, he didn't finish. He's going to get some water. He's a thirsty boy. All right, so once you can actually pick it up, jingle it. Make those sounds because that makes it harder. Those are, this is, these are little mini steps of leashing the dog up. Eventually, once you get the dog and you can pick up the leash, the dog stays seated and you can attach the leash. You walk to the door, and like we talked about earlier off camera, the rule is you have to sit at the door. If you don't sit, then I drop the leash, go sit back down. And at that time, I would go back to the door and sit again, as long as he's not barking at me. So now what we've taught the dog is being calm and balanced is the only way, only thing that you can do as a dog to get the walk to happen. Anything else stops the walk, or, you know, excitement stops the walk. So, um, come. So after a while, and this will take practice. So again, when you're on a tight timetable, okay, I got an hour. I can walk the dog, I can do this and this. Well, that takes a while. Well, then you're frustrated. How about we chew this, remember? The good chewings? There we go. All right, redirecting a dog is always a great thing to do. Now, uh, the first time I did this, it took the guy an hour and 45 minutes. And he's like, and we were on the walk, he's like, David, man, this is the best walk I've ever been on my dog, man. I love it, but man, I don't have an hour and 45 minutes to leash my dog up every time. I go, I understand. We went back home, we practiced again, 20 minutes, eight minutes, four minutes. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna get that fast of progression. Now, he's new into your house. He comes, he's a Mayday rescue dog, so we don't know his baggage is, he's bounced around. But this is teaching him. Most of us micromanage our dog, go here, sit down, do this exact thing. No, just be calm and quiet. You can be calm and quiet there, you can walk around, you can go to your dog bed, you can chew on stuff, just be calm and quiet. And as soon as you don't what I want, then do what I want, then what you want stops. So I call this a two-door method. Do what I want, you get what you want. Do anything else, nothing happens. Doesn't take a long. You don't have to punish a dog. Dogs don't learn from punishment. Guardians here don't do this, but a lot of people watch my videos. You just shouldn't punish your dog. But if you create a scenario where if I do what, I, what the human wants, I get a reward, I'm much more relaxed. So if you can achieve a calm and balanced state before you leave the house, your walks are gonna be much, much better. Because he's not what we call above threshold. Basically a dog version of hysteria. This is great. This is what we're looking for. Well, this is uh, 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 Melvin, which I still think is an awesome name. Great band, uh, but also a great dog name. And that is Bruce, and you can't see him, but they're both chewing bully bites. Don't ever give dogs raw hides. Raw hides are soaked in formaldehyde, which is the human embalming fluid, as well as bleach and ammonia. They also are not very digestible, so they sit in a dog's stomach. So um, a raw hide, or a, uh, what I use are the bully bites, which are very good uh, for them to chew on. And when dogs are stressed, they like to chew. So that's why giving him something to chew on is a nice way for him to relieve some of that stress. But again, last thing, exercise. If you have a dog that barks like he does and is crazy, 
a lot of times it means the dog's under exercise. They need exercise about every two to four hours, shorter segments. So find some creative ways to exercise your dog, take it for a walk, throw treats up and down the stairs, play fetch or something along those lines. All right, again, this is Melvin. Uh, that is, um, now I'm blanking. Bruce. Bruce, I'm David. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to bark.